and a drill. What is it? How to use it? Coach Nick here, and today that's what we're talking about. First up, like all effective uh, anabolic oral steroids, it is 17 alpha alkylated, meaning it is liver toxic. So if you take this, make sure you got your liver stack and make sure you check your liver enzymes beforehand. Don't drink on this. Don't do anything liver toxic or stressful. It's not a good idea. Okay, so you now got out of the way. There are a few ways of taking anadrol. One's injectable, one's oral, one's sublingual. Yes, those two are similar, but they are acutely different. The reason for that is injecting it and sublingual will, will bypass, to some degree, the liver, where anadrol gets uh, processed. It gets processed into its metabolites, which are the things that do the work. Anadrol by itself has little to no a binding affinity for the androceptor, receptor, which is where you may get the most of your growth and get most of your neural drive for the strength numbers you often see. It doesn't do a lot of the other things though. So, anadrol can be metabolized into various other uh, steroids which you don't actually know about. Yes, it's been used in medical settings. Yes, it's been around for a long time. No, we don't know what they all are, unfortunately. We do know that it gets metabolized into mistranolone, and that is a uh, basically 17 alpha alkylated DHT. It has incredible binding affinity for the AR and gives a lot of that neuro drive which gets associated with anadrol, the aggression. It does other things also. Those metabolites I spoke about, we think those are things that drive the growth and the muscle anabolism because DHT derivatives in general aren't amazing at building pure contractile tissue, which is what anadrol is actually quite well known for. So it has to be a metabolite which we don't we don't know about, hasn't been tested, hasn't been seen. We can only guess. Saying that about guesswork, there's some more guesswork involved because I'm sure you've heard, I'm sure a lot of you have heard that anadrol can cause estrogen-like side effects and can potentially cause, or at least associated with, gynecomastia, the dreaded thing we all try and avoid when taking these kind of things. But how does it do it? Because it's DHE derivative. Therefore, it's not a substrate for aromatase. So therefore, how does it increase estrogen or E2 specifically? There are a few different theories. The most plausible one is that it occupies estrogen receptors, which can drive growth, which is why we think it then uh, creates water retention, increases it cranks at your blood pressure, and increases your muscular strength. So we do think that's one plausible thing that occupies the estrogen receptor uh, that way, and therefore there's more circulating estrogen, which can then cause gyno. It's not that it increases your estrogen, it's that it binds up receptors, therefore increasing your serum level of E2. Again, we're not sure. This is just the best guess theory we have currently. I'm actually running out of time for Anadrol. I will do a second part because I do think it's quite a deep topic. But that's it for now. I've got a Patreon, my, my link tree, as well as a shop, coaching, all that malarkey. But that's it for now. Coach Neek out.